Hey, what's up everybody? Jamie Fenn here, and today I'm going to show you how to add snow to your videos and photos in DaVinci Resolve without using any third-party plugins or overlays, which means all the tools I'll be showing you how to use today are built into DaVinci Resolve, which is great for us creators because it allows us to control the amount of depth that this effect has over our content. But first, this is my YouTube channel, so feel free to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you're new to the channel, come comment down below, say hi. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button. That would be greatly appreciated. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the most basic example at first. This technique would only apply to shots that have not too much movement in the shot. So this is just a random gimbal shot that I have. And as you can see, there's not that much movement happening. So what I want to do is after I color grade it and I have it ready to have some snow added to it, I want to right click on it and create a new fusion clip. Put the playhead over that clip, make sure there's nothing else above it, and click on Fusion. Okay, so once you get into Fusion, you want to come up to your effects library. Then you want to double click on templates, scroll down until you see particles, select particles, scroll down, and you will see snow. Go ahead and click and drag snow into the node graph down here. So now you will see that this node tree appears and we need to connect this to our inputs and outputs. So the easiest way to do that so the easiest way to do that is just to click on the yellow arrow where this is connected and connect that to the camera 3D node and then click on this render node here and connect that to our media out. Let's go ahead and turn off our effects library so we have a little bit more real estate to look at. Okay, so once you've done that, now we have a very basic form of little pieces of snow. This is great for when you don't have too much movement in your shot. Now it's really subtle, it's probably really hard to see on YouTube, but this is where some adjustments can come into place. So let's come down here to our particle emitter node, which is this top node here. And if you look over here on the right hand side, you will see style. Go ahead and click on style. Then you will see a bunch of options. And then right here where you see size, you can actually just turn this up and just turn it up a little bit. A little bit goes a long way. And now as you can see, our shot has really big snowflakes. Now, like I said, this shot doesn't have too much movement. And if it did, it would look a little unreal. And I'll show you that on the next clip that we do the example. And as of right now, by the way, this effect is not rendering at the highest quality it could be rendering at. So when you go back to your edit tab, it'll be actually a lower quality. So you want to make sure that you come down here to the render 3D node, select that node, then come up here on the right hand side in the inspector and select image. You can see here by default, it's 1280 by 720, and there's these little dots right here. So if you just select these little dots, they will default to 1920 by 1080, which is my timeline resolution and fusion resolution right now. So now you have the same amount of quality as your original clip. You wanna make sure you always select that when using effects in DaVinci Resolve or just specific effects. Some of them don't have this, but a lot of them do. So make sure when you use templates and stuff that you come in here to the render node and select the 1920 by 1080. All right, so let's come over here to our next clip, which has some motion in it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to right click on it, select new fusion clip, click on fusion. But this time we're going to approach this a little differently and I'll show you why. So if we just came up here to the effects library and added our snow, just like we did before, we would have camera movement, but the snow would be moving with that camera movement. So as you can see, as the camera is panning to the right down into the tree itself, all of the snow is actually moving with the camera, which makes it look super unreal. So it looks completely fake and you would never want to do this on any video. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is come to our median one, make sure that is selected. Hold down shift and press spacebar and type in planar and you will see planar tracker. Go ahead and add that. Now, if you'd want to and you do have the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you could try to use the camera tracker and see if that works any better but this seemed to work pretty good for this specific situation. Next, what we wanna do is we want to scroll through the frame and we wanna pick something that is in the frame the entire time, that is just consistently in the shot that never leaves the actual frame. So I'm looking at this branch right here. So what I'm going to do now with my playhead all the way at the end, and it doesn't matter if yours is at the end or the beginning, but I'm going to select around this branch and make a box. Then over here on the right under the inspector, by the way, if your inspector isn't open, go ahead and click on inspector. We want to make sure our operation mode is track. 
Then we are going to set our reference frame from where we are going to start our track, which for me right now is at the very end of mine. So let's go ahead and click set. Under tracker, we want to select hybrid point area. I usually select hybrid point area for a lot of my tracking. It works pretty well. Then under the motion type, instead of the default setting, which is perspective, I'm going to select translation, rotation, and scale. I figured out that that works best for this clip. Your clips may differ. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to select track to start. And now as you can see, that's doing a pretty good job of tracking. And we just have to wait for it now to basically go all the way to the start of the clip. And that should be in three, two, one, yeah. Okay, so once you've completed your track, you want to create a planner transform. So select this button right here on the right hand side. Let's go ahead and get rid of this planner tracker that we have here. So what I like to do is easy shortcut is hold down shift and just click the node and it will just disconnect automatically. And I'm going to put this over here just for now, because sometimes what happens is you will get a track and then you'll go to use it and sometimes it won't work. So then you can just re add that in here by holding down shift and dropping it in and then redoing that process. Okay, so now once we've created our planar transform, we want to select the median one and hold down shift and press spacebar and type in merge. Then what we want to do is connect our planar transform to the merge. Next, we want to come up to our effects library and come back down under templates and select particles and add the snow again. So now instead of connecting the median in here to the camera 3D, what we can do is simply just connect the render 3D to the planar transform. Okay, so now we have snow. It's really tiny as you guys can see, but it is in our frame and it should be tracked to that specific branch that we track. But you guys have to keep in mind, now that it's tracked to this point of the branch, you will maybe see like a smaller window because it is sticking to that one specific point. So I'm going to turn this up again. I'm gonna turn up the size of the snowflakes so we can see how big they are and where they are. It's a lot easier when you do this. And so as you can see here that it basically kind of stops right here and you know, it just kind of cuts off the effect and it doesn't go all the way outside of the frame. So in order to fix that, what we can do is come back to our render 3D and we can adjust the width and just crank that thing up and also crank up the height. And as you can see, it covers the entire frame now. I've exaggerated it quite a bit for YouTube, but as you can see, if I turn it all the way down, you can see like this little square that's essentially tracked to that. And that's just one way of resizing it. There's different ways you could do it, but I just found that was the easiest. And as far as how the snow is reacting and how things look, you can come in through each one of these nodes and there are so many different varieties of adjustments that you guys can make. I'm not gonna be able to go over every single setting just because they would take forever. But if you guys click on one of these nodes, you can kind of change around. I mean, directional force, you can change up the strength of just how the snowflakes are reacting and the turbulence here. The turbulence node controls a lot of just how the snowflakes react. And so you can do a lot with just these four nodes right here. And as you guys have noticed, the snowflakes fade in. So if that's not something that you want, you can actually come down here to the particle emitter, select that node, come over here to the style, and over here where it says fade controls, you can see it says 0 0.051587. You could just make that zero. And now there will be no fade on the clip and it should just start right then and there. And as you can see, there's actually still some line right here. So I would actually technically come back in here, come back to the image settings and just basically turn this up to my liking and just kind of play with it, make it super big maybe. Um, but as you make this image bigger, you also need to come back in here to the size of the particle emitter and turn that down. And if you want to change up how much different in size of the snowflakes there is, which is creating more depth, which is great, you can turn up the size variance right here. Essentially, you can control how big the biggest snowflake is with this slider here. So if I want the biggest snowflake to be like that, well, there you go. All right, so real quick with photos. So essentially, all you have to do is drag in your photo and make sure that you come down here to the right hand cog where you see the settings. And you want to come to your master settings and select the resolution of your photo or whatever output resolution that you're aiming for. Then push OK. But for this example, I'm just going to keep it like this. Then I right clicked on it, created a new fusion clip, and you essentially would just do the exact same thing as we did on our first method. And there you go. We got snow. Hey, 
By the way, there's a playlist right here of all different types of visual effects and transitions that I think you'll love. So make sure to watch them until I post another video and I will see you guys in that video. See ya. <laughs>